Cronin's got to get that out of there. Uh, change of mind, Healy. Big floated pass out to Calvin Nash. The little hitch kick and he's away. Calvin Nash times the pass beautifully and Munster are in again. And Liam Coombs looking to improve the conversion chances of Healy. But what about that? Healy involved with the ball out to Nash. He had some work to do. But Calvin Nash, who's been steadily coming through and getting more and more senior experience as the years go on. Yeah, you're very welcome back to the uh, programme. Going to go to uh, rugby next. And the United Rugby Championship continued over the uh, weekend. And Munster continued on their winning ways as well, maintaining their fine start to the season. Uh, they scored six tries and secured a third bonus point win to start the season at the Park Wise Scarlets on Saturday afternoon. Munster 43, Scarlets 13. The uh, full-time score, comprehensive win an impressive win from uh, Johan van Granza charges a vibrant attacking play and a relentless rock solid defence laid the platform there with Jack O'Sullivan Liam Coombs with a brace Calvin Nash Jeremy Lockman and player of the match Chris Clute scoring the tries there as Ben Healy kicked 12 points great to see Waterford duo Jack O'Donoghue who captained the team along with Thomas Ahern uh, starting for Munster as well and playing big roles as well for Johan van Granza men there was a injury and a uh, pretty worried Johan van Grand was speaking afterwards about Orgy Snyman who had to uh, retire uh, limping off in that victory over the Scarlets at the weekend the South African lock looked in trouble there a scan is set to determine the extent of the uh, problem I'm sure there'll be uh, further news over the next uh, couple of days Munster back in action next weekend and back on home soil as well as they face provincial rivals Connacht at Thomond Park on Saturday with the biggest crowd of the season so far set to attend so no doubt plenty of build up to that one and uh, looking forward to to that one in Limerick next Saturday. We are WLR. We are Ireland's local station of the year. Going to go to uh, Gaelic Games uh, for the uh, next uh, while and the JJ Cavanagh and Sons County Senior Football Championship got underway here in the Dacia this weekend with four games uh, played three of those yesterday. There was a winning start for Stradbally player manager Michael Brick Welch in Friar Field as the uh, Reds cruised to a comfortable victory over an injury hit on Ryan 217 to 15. The uh, full time score there, Owen O'Brien sending over six points and Daniel Weldon shot 1 3 for Stradbally there who were 27 to 1 2 in front at half time the green flags coming from Tommy Connors and Daniel Weldon there Tony Bernock got a stunning goal for on Ryan on uh, 18 minutes but uh, they found the going uh, tough Stradbally 2-17 on Ryan 1-5 the full time score in that one elsewhere yesterday a second half goal by Adam Welch saw Kilmack Thomas make a winning start they got the better of Bricky Rangers and Lemmy Bryan 1-10 to 9 points was the uh, full time score in that one one at the uh, same time in Farrar Field Brian Lynch kicked to 9 points as Clashmore Kinsale Begg uh, got their camp Campaign off to a winning start. They defeated near neighbours Ardmore by 12 points to 1 5. Kieran Keating fisted in a goal for the Seasiders, but 13 wides were to prove costly there as Clashmore Kinsale Beg got the win and also the uh, local bragging rights. They also beat, of course, Ardmore in last year's championship. Clashmore Kinsale Beg will face Rat Gormock, the 2019 champions, uh, next weekend. It was uh, a boy weekend for the uh, Cumra side, and uh, we're going to get some post match reaction from yesterday's local derby in Friar Field. At the full time whistle, Tomas McCarthy spoke to the Clashmore Kinsale Beg manager, Paddy Connery. Well, Tomas, yeah, happy to get the win. I suppose we, we targeted this game all season as, as our most important game of the season. We needed to get, get up and running with a win. That's the way the competition is, is fixed. There's no room for error in the groups. We have a smallish panel, we have a few injuries, but we, we've done our best. It was hard to get them going after the hurling uh, defeat there four weeks ago. They were down and, down and out a little bit after it, but it, it took us a while to pick them up. But we got we picked it up and we played a couple of challenge games. Um, got a bit of a wake-up call in a challenge game, which was no harm last weekend. And they brought an intensity and a work rate to training this week. And we just felt if they brought that today that we'd be, we'd be in with a good shot. Did Brian Lynch show today, Paddy, that he's one of the top club forwards in the county, especially that... That point towards the end, it was thing of beauty, wasn't it? Uh, there's no doubt about it, Tomas. He's actually our captain this year. But if you, if you look at, he's our talisman and has been with a couple of seasons. He'd hold his own with any forward in the county, and he'd be a tricky job for any defender to mark. But as you said, that that point to the outside of the boot from the stand was was something to something to really behold. Yeah. We, we saw Tyg de Borca and Brian O'Halloran in the stand today. Paddy will they feature before the season is out? Um, and Edmund O'Halloran as well. He was serving a suspension from last year's quarter final. So Edmund might come back into the fray, but it would be unlikely that Brian and Tyg would feature the season. Will you have to go to another level, 
Paddy, next time out against Ratgorm or County Champions two years ago? Yeah, for sure. As I said, this was phase one. We hadn't really spoken about about the, the next week. All week, we just focused on getting our win here. But I just said to the lads there, we, we have a chance to measure up against the best in the county or one of the best in the county. And, and we'll, we'll relish that challenge and, and hopefully raise it for next Sunday again. Yeah, Paddy Connery, the uh, Clashmore Kinsale Beg manager in conversation with uh, Tomos after the uh, full-time whistle yesterday on Saturday afternoon. Kilrossenty made a winning start in Group B. They were comfortable 5-13 to 1-6 victors over St. Saviour's at the Kill venue. They led by five points at half-time, but it was the City side who made the brighter start with a couple of great early scores there. Garrett Duffy with two beauties, but uh, two goals in the space of four minutes from Anthony Fitzgerald and Josh Kay got Kilrossenty back into it. They led 2-6 to 1-4 at half Time Sean Corcoran with the goal for the city side, but uh, Kid Rossenty really drove things on in the second half and restricted uh, Saviors to just two points in the second 30 minutes. And they added three further goals as well. Two of those coming from super sub Joey Veal, who netted twice, and Tommy Prendergast also uh, raising a green flag for Darren Mulhern's side, who kicked a 5 11 uh, from play 5 13 to 1 6. The full time score they face goal tier in round two next weekend. We'll bring you those round two fixtures very, very shortly indeed. But after Saturday, action in Kill. I caught up with the aforementioned Kilrossan team manager Darren Mulhern who was delighted to start the campaign with a victory. Yeah we're delighted um, when we started slow like we, we, we'd come out to try and start fast but saviours in fairness to them they'd kick three great scores right on the first two minutes um, so we dug deep then the boys in fairness they knew that if they just ground out and did what they were they were trained to do that they'd eventually get the, the, the rub of the green you know mm-hmm. so yeah it was great now the way they got some great scores I think a good thing we scored a lot of great scores where he built it out from the back you know um, moved the ball well and when we did that I think yeah we, we, we looked we looked fairly fairly good Yeah there was some good team scores as you say the ball was thrown around given to the man in the better position is that something that, that pleased you as a management? Oh it is yeah that's what we're always saying that's all the thing we want is to move the ball quick get the ball to the best Kilrossany man on the field um, like we're just trying to get into the lads heads there's only one football so there's no point everybody having it so we give it to the, the Kilrossany man in the best position and let him do what he should do with it Yeah absolutely and as you say Saviours did start very well you know three early points they were motoring well and I suppose it was going to take I suppose every team I suppose a couple of minutes to get up to the pitch of championship because you haven't played in so long I suppose That's it yeah I mean, look, challenges are great just to, but they don't hone your skills you know they don't get to that championship pace, pace so like we had four debutants today and I just said to him at the end of it if you ask somebody who'd never seen us before to pick out one fella never played senior football before they wouldn't pick any of the four of them so that was, that was very encouraging too like Tom Mooney at cornerback had an absolutely massive game he was a joy to watch you know to um, Alan up in the forwards we had Rean Hayes and Anthony Fitz you know the four of them just outstanding performances but I say the teamwork when we did the teamwork it, it worked very well for us and we moved the ball um, yeah and some, some lovely scores and five up at half time, I suppose those goals from from Anthony, the aforementioned Anthony, Fitz, Anthony Fitzgerald and Josh Kay, of course, you know, got a neat finish as well. So he went in five up. You must have been happy at the break. Oh, well, we were because we didn't deserve it. As I say at the water break, we were ahead. I don't know, were we ahead by a pint or we level? But as Jared said to me, we didn't deserve to be there. We weren't playing as good as we should. Saviors were getting a run on us, so that bit of luck helps. But just the boys, they, they stuck at it. They dug deep and they just kept building and building and building on it. So that's that's what we're looking at. The fitness was there, and we knew that we'd we'd last the six. 60 minutes so it was great for them it's great for the lads they're delighted now with the performance but they know that we can do better they know we can't afford to give 15 minutes on, on the top teams in it that you, you, the game could be over after 15 minutes if, if you give them a run on you so we'll keep working on that we'll have guide here next week we'll look forward to now and pre- prepare for the week and um, hopefully if we can get one on that we have two weeks then before the next round so it'll be a good good hard sessions for a couple of weeks mm, yeah and of course just to concede two points in the second half must have been really pleasing then you know to, you got the scores as well Joey came off the bench with, with two neat goals and Tommy I suppose two of the experienced heads I suppose you know getting on the, go- getting on the score sheet yeah well look at that's Joey I said to Joey at the start even if he's not starting it's wow to have him to come on he just like and when he comes on he just brings out all the forwards around him he gets lads moving to where they should be moving you know as you said the experience you just can't beat it and two nearly had the hat trick but yeah it was great great for him it's great to have him like and any fella comes in like that's the thing we have 20-25 lads we have fellas that we can bring in that don't weaken the team in any way and it actually adds something different to it so it is and it's all positive for the light with the start mm, yeah and to get championship game time into those youngsters as you said with the likes of you know Tommy, Martin Dunn these vastly experienced players even Paul White back in the goal as well there is that nice blend there Darren in, in, in the squad oh there is yeah and as I say we have probably 7 under 20 and then we have probably 5 or 6 over 30 and you know you have a good there's a good mix there and we have the experienced fellas in, in the right spot 
like straight up the middle and they're great lads seeing courage fellas around them they'll tell fellas where to go you know and, and even some of the young fellas are just, just, just they, 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 know, they, they, they kind of start young that they actually know where they should be in the field even they have great experience for young heads even some of them you know they're after doing a lot of football up to now um, so yeah I think we've a good blend this year so hopefully we can carry it on through yeah and final point now puts you in a great position I suppose to reach the quarterfinals of the here uh, next weekend in, in, in Welsh Park another big challenge it is a big challenge, yeah. It's great to get in there. It's a great surface. I can say it's the surface in Galt here. It's 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 some place you'd like to play. It's a big, wide, open field. And it's just like like Saviors last year when we played them. There was only a kick of a ball. We were blessed blessed to beat them last year. Um, and Galt here, another team that we always have great battles with. Like there's always only a couple of points between us. So we look forward to it. Um, it, it will. It'll be um, it'll be another tough challenge. So we'll be preparing for that now for the week get, get over this recover and um, we'll give it a good lash next Saturday again Yeah, Darren Mulhern there, the uh, Ken Rossenty uh, manager. Uh, thanks to Darren for that uh, post-match uh, chat in Kill on Saturday afternoon. The uh, Senior Football Championship continues next weekend. Three games down for decision on Saturday, all getting underway at three o'clock. And for Harfield and Group C, it's the Nyer against Bricky Rangers for a three o'clock throw-in at half past three in Welsh Park. Group B, Gold Tier, entertain Kill Rossenty. Well, at seven o'clock in Fraher Field on Saturday night, it's Balnacorty, the defending champions, starting their campaign against On Rhine. One game down for decision on Sunday afternoon. It's in Group D, where 2019 County Champions Rat Gormock entertain Clashmore Kinsale Beg with throw in for that one at two o'clock. Meanwhile, uh, those involved in a brawl at an underage GA match in County Wicklow over the weekend should be banned from the association for at least five years. That's according to former Galway footballer Ray Silk after a video of fighting at an under 15 final uh, D final that was, I believe, in Wicklow uh, last weekend went. A viral. The All-Ireland winner was uh, speaking earlier and says there needs to be consequences. The county chairman Martin Fitzgerald of Wicklow, he has a job of work to do there and you know I wouldn't ban the clubs but I think the people that can be identified in that video clip should be banned from the GA for a minimum I'd say five years, also maybe fines for the club but when I say personal responsibility I think everyone involved in the GA, you can't allow that to happen. Absolutely unacceptable, it's terrible stuff. WLR, the sound of Waterford.